Have you heard of the new feature from OpenAI to build your own uh, GPT? The main idea is that you're going to build your own uh, GPT, your own uh, chatbot, and you're going to give it some uh, instructions and you can also give it some documents. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, build one. So for me, it was about figuring out what is the main use I can give. So let me go here to explore and let me show it to you. Uh, so it's here, create a GPT. So it should serve a specific purpose and it kind of works like a very mini uh, chatbot or a mini website or a mini assistant that you can build. So for instance, uh, if you are someone who needs to write something that's, you know, very standard that repeats itself, you need to write your quarterly report, uh, you need to answer emails, um, you need to talk to your client via email or via text message, anything that you can imagine being repetitive, you can create here. And for me, I'm going to show you the main way that I found it to be very useful for me or one of them, um, which was, so I was actually in doubt whether I should build something to help me answer at people online. So help me answer my students, um, or just, you know, write new Python scripts or whatever. Uh, but in this case, um, I asked for it to build me something to help me write scripts for my online courses, specifically for the more technical, uh, videos. Let me. Uh, zoom out here a bit so that you can see all of the instructions and it says hi I'll help you build a new GPT you can say something like make a creative who helps generate visuals for a new product or make a software engineer who helps format my code and what I'm going to write here so I want make a copywriter who is uh, an expert at um, statistics and data science to help me create uh, scripts on technical topics for my online courses. And here we start. So we're going to give it these initial instructions. And you can see that there's this configure tab. We'll go there. But first, let's build here step by step. And the first thing that you see is that you have this GPT builder and, you know, slowly but surely it's getting there. Let me take a quick break. It roughly takes around 20 seconds or 30 each time. But until we get there, let me make a pause. Alrighty, so we have the initial answer. And I would like to highlight that you immediately start seeing here some actions that you can take. And so that this is a possibility that you already have with some predetermined uh, commands that you can ask. And at the same time, it's time to give it a name, a data scribe. I don't like it so much. Uh, so you can, for instance, customize uh, the name. So give me a name that combines a famous writer with the words um data or statistics or analytics right i'm being extra picky here just to show you that i can be extra picky it's not that the name matters i mean the name matters but it's not the most important thing uh here so it's going to give me a new name shakespeare analytics and i'm like yeah okay uh go with that um, and now it's generating a profile picture and it's generating the profile picture uh, with a uh, doll E as well. Again, something that you can say, yay or nay, um, really build it uh, for you. And I'm like, okay, this is actually, you know, pretty cute. It has this thing, uh, what's it called? I am the thing that they used in Harry Potter uh, to write the quill. Uh, you have some charts, books, it's cute. Um, yeah, I like it. So this is something that I can add. And you can see here um, that we start to have some things. So these commands that I have here, um, this is something that you can edit here on the left, on the conversation starters. And let me go back to create. There was something odd. Okay, 
Now it says great. Let's refine the context of Shakespeare analytics further. To start, let's focus on its primary role and goals. And this will happen to each GPT that you build. So whatever it is, is okay. We have the general thing, what it does. That was the initial command. Name and image is there. Now let's refine. Could you tell me more about the specific types of technical topics you'd like to cover in your online courses? This will help me ensure it's tailored precisely to your needs. For example, are there certain statistical models or data science concepts you want to prioritize? And I could start, for instance, now tailoring to something that um, I'm building. So currently, I am focused on uh, statistical topics, um, namely um, A-B testing. So this is something that I'm currently building, A-B testing. But in general, it should be a general uh, script writing uh, GPT uh, for any uh, statistical uh, or machine learning uh, concept. So you can put it like that, which is okay, right? Doesn't matter. It's also something that you can iterate uh, upon. This is not set in stone. Um, again, you can always go here uh, to this configuration tab and actually go here. And you can see that it's building. And for those who understand what is called prompt engineering works, it basically, this is how it is working, right? Your role is to assist in creating scripts. Um, okay, for online courses with a current focus on statistical topics, especially A-B testing, while also being versatile enough to cover a range of statistical and machine learning concepts. Uh, as an expert in statistics and data science provides clear, accurate, and engaging content that breaks down complex theories into understandable segments. It uses real-world examples to explain concepts, um, making them relatable and practical for a diverse audience. Shakespeare analytics avoids overly technical jargon. I guess it's okay. It's important not to avoid completely, but this is okay for now aiming to make the content accessible to beginners, yet insightful for those with some background knowledge. Okay, that sums up what I want. Clarifies doubts, expands on topics when needed, and ensures the scripts are educationally engaging and informative, matching the tone of an experienced copywriter passionate about making data science and statistics approachable and interesting. So this is good. Let me go back here to create. So it says, now that we have refined the role and goals, let's talk about what Shakespeare analytics should emphasize or avoid. Uh, for instance, are there any specific ways you wanted to approach complex topics or any common misconceptions in these fields that it should steer uh, clear of? Um, I would like it to approach topics in an engaging uh, story uh, telling way. Um, not avoiding the technical jargon, but making sure it is understandable by all. Um, so this is something I can um, write about. In the meantime, so weirdly enough, our um, name and image are not still here. But I wanted to show you now, so how can I explain standard deviation in a simple way? Now, this is a command, right? But it's a very simple one, right? And it's also very specific. How can I explain whatever? Doesn't really work. So what you can add here, for instance, is... Um, so for instance, because at least for me, the goal is really to focus on something that you can use and use again. So, for instance, help me write a script on a TensorFlow, whatever, TensorFlow topics. Or uh, how to make data cleaning interesting. Okay, this is actually cool because it's how to make something, um, or how to make topic X. And what are some real life applications? And here, 
like another thing that you can add is okay give me five ideas for a data science uh, project this is something that works as well let me go here uh, to create but in the capabilities we have web browsing dall e image generation let me click as well the code interpreter because it can be that i want to add some code to it or some data in the actions here this is a bit more advanced it has to do with the open ai schema um, this is something that i'll steer away and in fact i've not used it yet and let me go back to create see how it is currently so next let's think about how shakespeare analytics should interact with users for clarification should it ask for more details if a user's request is vague or would you prefer to make assumptions and provide a general response based on information given um yeah please ask for clarification that's very important i don't like it when it makes assumptions here we go let me click on enter now it is uh, thinking again at the same time uh, we have here the preview and we'll publish it uh, or I'll show you how to publish it, which is also kind of cool. Um, I also find it nice that it's very easy um, here to actually, you know, work with it. Okay, next task. Finally, let's personalize Shakespeare analytics. How would you like it to communicate? For example, should it have a formal or casual tone? Use humor, maintain a strictly professional demeanor. Um, yeah, keep the tone. Okay, so actually it ignored the question and started answering. Uh, ah, okay, engaging in informative scripts for online courses with a focus. Okay, designed to explain concept ideas in an approachable manner. Okay, because that I had answered already. So it just now is inferring. Uh, feel free to try out Shakespeare analytics in the playground on the right. So it's this part here. If you have any refinements or additional features you'd like to add, just let me know. How would you like uh, to proceed? Um, so one thing that I want to add, I'm going to upload some files. So I have like a lot of scripts that I've built over the years. So I can give some here. Uh, let me add the last ones that I have, um, which are, for instance, on um, RNN and LSTM. So these are the scripts. Let me click on open and all of this can be added. Now you can add quite a few at a time. Um, so these are seven, it works. Maybe you can add 10. Try to add once 20, it did not work. Um, tried it more than once as well, make sure. So you kind of need to add them batch by batch. Now, let me go here to create and I'm gonna add here, analyze, analyze the uh, documents in terms of tone, uh, structure, um, and overall way of uh, writing to incorporate into the GPT. Now, there was something here, some error with one of my uploads. I don't know what it was exactly. It was the, or one of it was missing. I think I saw with my, you know, one of my eyes, uh, 610. Um, let me go here. Activation function, which is currently not here. Let me try to add it again. See if it actually comes now. Otherwise, it's fine. We can go with just the others. And okay, I have successfully assessed and read the contents of the six documents. Ah, okay, the 610 is out. These documents are titled like this. Next, I'll analyze these documents in terms of tone, structural, and overall way of writing. This analysis will help incorporate these elements into Shakespeare analytics, writing uh, capabilities. I'll begin the analysis now. The analysis of your documents reveals the following characteristics. And here we go. Uh, particularly like average sentence length, um, kind of important, um, or even the paragraphs. It's also important because it's a very specific structure because these are scripts um, that I would try to read um, for, you know, for my online course lectures. 
and the tone across the document is slightly varied with the occasional use of exclamations and questions, suggesting an engaging but measured style. Yeah, kind of agree. Documents are structured with a moderate number of paragraphs and a consistent average length of around 11 to 15 words, indicating clarity and conciseness in the writing. The content appears to be informative and focused with a balance between detail and readability. These insights will be incorporated into statistics analytics to align its script writing capabilities with the style demonstrated in this document. Would you like uh, any specific adjustments or additional analysis? Um, I would say not for now. Or better yet. Okay, not for now. Should be fine. I think should be clear how this is um, actually working. Now, um, let me go here. So conversation starters. Aha, uh -huh, this has also been changed now. Let me just change here. So give me five ideas for um, data science project. Um, just so that we have one um, that we are, you know, kind of configuring ourselves. Uh, knowledge is here. Um, and okay, additional settings. Use conversation data in your GPT to improve our models. Yeah, it's okay. So save only people with a link. Um, let me uh, go here, or only people with a link. And okay, something that I need uh, to change maybe here on the left. Um, so shakes, beer analytics here we go and the image yeah use dal e um yeah maybe because it's new it's not really connecting the dots uh, yet and then let me click here on confirm putting it as a public um in case that you want to use it as well and here we go we have our shakespeare analytics mm, let me click on give me five ideas for a data science project. And you can even see that um, it's fairly similar to your general chat GPT, because that's the goal really to have something really tailored uh, for you. Alrighty, we have here five ideas, predictive maintenance, sentiment analysis, so on, uh, and so on. Now, in case that you want um, to you know, try to change something. Uh, so Shakespeare analytics, we, ah, here we go. It was here, edit uh, GPT. Now we can also explore here. Um, there was something that I wanted to explore. Ah, here we go. It was there on the edit button. So we have the general, so theme system, uh, beta features, as a plus user, enjoy early access. Oh yeah, in case that you have not realized, you do need to be a plus user to use this, but that's okay. Data controls, chat history and training, shared links, um, export data, export, build a profile name, and you can also add it to a website, which is also pretty, pretty cool. And this will be it. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I think it's really, really cool. There's been so many companies that have kind of built their own bots using the open API and they kind of work similar uh, to this, but this one is included in your chat GPT plus in case that you're a member, in case that you're not, I would highly recommend because again, it's something that you do for your work. And in case that you use stuff related to text, um, it's highly valuable. This is it until the next video. Have fun.